Although the Tibetan Book of the Dead is traditionally read in order to guide the spirit of the dead person, it is primarily meant to be studied and practiced during life, not only so that one will be able to remember it at the time of death, but because its teachings actually refer to this life just as much as they do to any future existence. Buddhism teaches that nothing is static or permanent. Life is a continuous flow of interconnected moments. The nature of each moment is determined by what has gone before, just as one's next birth is determined by one's actions during this lifetime. So we can say that life and death are actually both taking place at every instant. The word bardo means an intermediate state, a gap or period of suspension when one situation has come to an end and another has not yet developed. It occurs in the interval between two states of mind as well as between states of existence, such as birth and death. Any everyday situation of hesitation or uncertainty or of inner conflict between opposing emotions contains characteristics of the intermediate state. So do those extremes of emotion when one is on the edge of complete exhaustion or feels one is approaching the borderline of insanity. At such moments of concentrated energy, one may suddenly enter a neutral state in which one feels completely free, calm, and detached. This is an intuitive glimpse of the ground of being, the nature of mind itself. It is called dharmata, the essence of things as they really are. It is described as indivisible emptiness and luminosity. Just before death, a dying person's consciousness becomes progressively more and more detached from the external world and from the body until it is completely concentrated within and there is an experience of a sense of internal glow or luminosity. This is called the bardo of the moment before death. After death, the consciousness is freed from the limitations of the physical body and is able to perceive a subtle level of existence where everything manifests as sounds and colors instead of solid material forms. Underlying all these appearances is a luminosity, the light of reality. And if one can recognize that and merge with it, one reaches the absolute level of dharmakaya. If one is unable to let go into that state, visions of the Buddhas and other divine beings appear, first in peaceful forms and then in wrathful forms, offering many different approaches to enlightenment. At the same time, our memories of the ordinary world of suffering, or samsara, also beckon us, appearing as paths of colored light leading us to future rebirth in one of the six realms of existence. Next come terrifying experiences of judgment by Mara, the Lord of Death, and the pursuit and torture by avenging demons. The fundamental teaching of the whole text is to recognize that these visions are the projections of one's own mind. As soon as one realizes this, one is liberated from the visions. Finally, if one has been unable to recognize this, one enters the bardo of becoming, the transition to a future birth in one of the six realms. Even at this point, there are still opportunities to recognize the luminosity, because the focus of the mind is concentrated by intense fear. Instead of escaping into a new form of existence, the consciousness in the bardo can stop and confront this fear, and so attain liberation from it. If this fails, the text gives instructions on choosing a new birth that will be of benefit to oneself and others. All these situations described in the Tibetan Book of the Dead can be seen as symbolic or visionary pictures of events and experiences in human life. For instance, even at the last minute, there is always the possibility of refusing to give in to anger or passion, refusing to be caught up in that world, and preventing the birth of some seemingly inevitable situation. The six realms of existence represent both the various states of mind into which our consciousness is continually reborn and the different ways of experiencing the world. They arise from the instinctive emotional reactions to the openness and brilliance of the luminosity. The realm of hell, the lowest of the six realms, is the most intense, dominated by aggression, hatred, and anger. Hell can be burning hot, an environment of claustrophobic terror, or icy cold, a frozen isolation that results from pride and resentment towards others. The realm of hungry ghosts develops from greed a hunger that continually increases and can never be satisfied. Possession brings no pleasure to the hungry ghost, only searching and grasping matter, so there is a sense of endless frustration and disappointment, even though one is surrounded by food and wealth. The animal realm arises from ignorance. It is a deliberate turning away, playing deaf and dumb so as to avoid the brilliant light of reality. It can create a comfortable, predictable way of life, but one that is also very mechanical and without any sense of humor 
unable to respond to the unexpected or the unknown. The human realm is based on passion and enjoyment. It contains qualities of exploration, striving, and creativity that may lead to success and fulfillment, but also suspicion and doubt that continually undermine the sense of achievement. The realm of the jealous gods is based on a fundamental sense of jealousy or envy, as though the very existence of others is a threat to one's own survival. Here, no relationship is possible without intrigue. One must always be on one's guard against hidden enemies and on the watch for opportunities to win, either by diplomacy or superior strength. The realm of gods develops from pride, an instinctive self-consciousness which arises when faced with the impersonal openness of the luminosity. It is the highest realm of self-development, pleasure, and peace, with the feeling that one is invincible and immortal. We can easily recognize in these six realms the familiar psychological states of daily life, but at the same time we always possess within us inherent Buddha nature, the latent possibility of enlightenment, which appears as aspects of wisdom or enlightenment corresponding to our particular tendencies. In the intermediate state they manifest as the five Tathagatas, or Buddhas, inviting us to dissolve into the rays of light that stream out from their hearts. The five wisdoms are the liberated energy of enlightenment, but in samsara they are distorted into the five negative emotions or poisons. They are also known as the five families to which all living things belong. The first of the Tathagatas in the center of the mandala is Varochana, and his family is known simply as the Tathagata of Buddha family. It is associated with the basic poison of confusion or ignorance, which it deliberately ignores and out of which all the other poisons evolve. But Varochana also embodies the wisdom of Dharmadhatu, the limitless, all-pervading space in which everything exists as it really is, the truth that reverses ignorance. The second Tathagata is Akshobhya, in the eastern side of the mandala. He is the ruler of the Vajra family, whose poison is aggression or hatred. This is transmuted into the mirror-like wisdom, which reflects everything calmly and clearly. In the southern side of the mandala is Ratna Sambhava, ruler of the Ratna family. Ratna means jewel, and in particular the wish-granting gem which magically grants all desires. So here the poison is pride, resulting from the possession of spiritual or material riches. Its antidote and corresponding wisdom is the wisdom of equality and equanimity. In the west is Amitabha, whose family is Padma, the lotus. The poison of this family is desire or passion, grasping hungrily at everything, and its wisdom is the wisdom of discrimination, which provides the coolness and carefulness that allows for passion to be transformed into compassion. Lastly, in the north is Amogasiddhi, ruler of the karma family. Karma means action and is symbolized by a sword or double vajra. Envy is the poison associated with karma, arising from the insatiable ambition that drives this kind of activity, while its enlightened aspect is the wisdom that accomplishes all actions. The Tathagatas embody the transcendent qualities of enlightenment, their absolute existence. They are united with their consorts, the fertile feminine energy, which completes them and allows them to manifest. They are attended by male and female bodhisattvas, which represent the principle of active engagement for the sake of all beings. At first, these deities appear in peaceful form. They simply reveal the existence of enlightenment immovable and invincible, the beginningless and endless state of absolute peace. Such a pure, impersonal state may appear threatening as well as attractive, which leads us into the next vision, the Vidyadaras. The Vidyadaras are simply expressions of the same Buddha nature seen in a different light. They are the essence of communication, the divine form of the tantric guru possessing power over the magical aspects of the universe. They combine elements of both the peaceful and wrathful deities. If we do not respond to the communication of the Vidyadaras, they become transformed into their wrathful manifestations, the Harukas. The basic qualities of the five families continue, but now their energy is expressed in a very dramatic and powerful way. This is the ruthless, unyielding quality of peacefulness, which does not allow any escape. Fundamentally, the quality of the five families is a peaceful state because it is completely stable and nothing can disturb it. The tremendous energy of that peaceful state now manifests itself as wrathful. It is often described as compassionate anger, anger without hatred. 
These transformations, too, have counterparts in our own lives. As their active energy increases, not only do the possibilities for insight increase, but also the possibility of danger. For instance, psychic experiences and the awareness of the magic of life belong to the realm of the Vidyadaras, while the activity of the Harukas might be felt as an accident or a sudden shock that wakes one up to reality. After the Harukas, a whole crowd of other fierce and terrifying deities appears, each symbolizing a specific quality of enlightenment and carrying out a particular function of the individual consciousness. Again and again we are reminded that these visions come from our mind and we need only recognize them as our own projections in order to be liberated from them. In the text it says that all this is meant to remind the dead person of what he has already practiced during his life. But we can still use the essential principles of the teaching to help those who are not familiar with it by opening our minds to them and transmitting our own sense of warmth, stability, and confidence. If one is close to someone who is dying, it is very important to be truthful about what is happening, so that there is complete mutual trust, friendship, and communication. As the person's physical and mental condition deteriorates, he or she develops a higher awareness of the surrounding emotional atmosphere, so that one's own state of mind is extremely important and becomes part of the dying person. It is impossible to know what someone in the intermediate state is going through, or whether you are still having any real contact with a person. But the essential thing is to continue to provide this stable environment so that automatically the consciousness in the bardo will be attracted to that. When one listens to the Tibetan Book of the Dead, although all the symbolic details are significant, it is not necessary to analyze and remember them all in order to benefit from the text. All these details contribute to overwhelming emotional impressions. Just listening in a relaxed, open, and attentive state of mind will make us receptive to their inner meaning, and we will be able to recognize them as experiences in our own lives and understand their symbolism intuitively. The Tibetan Book of the Dead Homage to the Gurus, the Three Kayas, Amitabha, Infinite Light, the Dharmakaya, Peaceful and Wrathful Lotus Deities, the Sambhogakaya, Padmasambhava, Protector of Beings, the Nirmanakaya. This great liberation through hearing, the means of liberation in the bardo for yogins of average capacities, is in three parts. The introduction, the main subject matter, and the conclusion. Firstly, the introduction, the means of liberating human beings. First of all, one should have studied the instructions, which should certainly liberate those of the highest capacities. But if they do not, one should practice the ejection of consciousness, which liberates spontaneously as soon as it is thought of in the bardo of the moment before death. This should certainly liberate yogins of average capacity, but if it does not, one should strive in this great liberation through hearing in the bardo of dharmata. Therefore, the yogin should first examine the sequence of signs of death according to the spontaneous liberation of the signs of death. And when they are definitely completed, he should affect the ejection of consciousness, which liberates spontaneously as soon as it is thought of. If ejection is affected, there is no need to read the liberation through hearing. But if not, it should be read clearly and precisely, close to the dead body. If the body is not present, one should sit on the dead person's bed or seat and, proclaiming the power of truth, call on his consciousness and read, imagining him sitting in front listening. At this time, sounds of crying and weeping are not good, so his relatives should be shut out. If the body is present, then during the interval between the ceasing of the breath and the ceasing of pulsation in the arteries, his guru, or a dharma brother or sister whom he loved and trusted, should read this great liberation through hearing close to his ear. The teaching of the liberation through hearing. An elaborate offering should be made to the three jewels if the materials are available but if they are not available, one should set out whatever there is and visualize the rest without limit. One should say the inspiration prayer calling on the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas for rescue seven or three times. Then loudly recite the inspiration prayer for the deliverance from the dangerous pathway of the bardo and the main verses of the bardo. Then read the great liberation through hearing seven or three times. It is in three parts showing the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death, the great reminder of showing in the bardo of dharmata, and the instructions for closing the entrance to the womb of becoming. 
First, showing the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death. By having this read to them, all kinds of ordinary people who have received teachings but have not recognized, although they are intelligent, or who have recognized but have practiced little, will recognize the basic luminosity and bypass the bardo experience to reach the unoriginated dharmakaya. The method of instruction. It is best if his principal guru from whom he requested teaching can be present, but otherwise a dharma brother or sister with whom he has taken the samaya vow or a spiritual friend in the same lineage. If none of these are to be found, then someone who can read aloud clearly and precisely should read it several times. This will remind him of what his guru has shown him, and he will immediately recognize the basic luminosity and be liberated. There is no doubt. The time of instruction. When respiration has ceased, prana is absorbed into the wisdom duty, and luminosity free from complexities shines clearly in the consciousness. If prana is reversed and escapes into the right and left nadis, the bardo state appears suddenly, so the reading should take place before the prana escapes into the right and left nadis. The length of time during which the inner pulsation remains after respiration has ceased is just about the time taken to eat a meal. The method of instruction. It is best if ejection of consciousness is affected when the respiration is just about to stop. But if it has not been affected, one should say these words. O child of noble family, now the time has come for you to seek a path. As soon as your breath stops, what is called the basic luminosity of the first bardo, which your guru has already shown you, will appear to you. This is the dharmata. Open and empty like space, luminous void, pure naked mind, without center or circumference. Recognize then and rest in that state, and I too will show you at the same time. This should be firmly implanted in his mind by repeating it many times over in his ear until he stops breathing. Then, when the ceasing of the breath is heard, one should lay him down on the right side in the lion position and firmly press the two pulsating arteries which induce sleep until they have stopped throbbing. Then the prana which has entered the duti will not be able to go back and will be certain to emerge through the Brahmarandra. Now the showing should be read. At this time the first bardo, which is called the luminosity of dharmata, the undistorted mind of the dharmakaya, arises in the mind of all beings. Ordinary people call this state unconscious because the prana sinks into the avaduti during the interval between the ceasing of the breath and of the pulsation. The time at last is uncertain, depending on the spiritual condition and the state of yogic training. It lasts for a long time and those who have practiced much were steady in the meditation practice of tranquility and sensitive. In striving to show such a person, one should repeat the instruction until pus comes out from the apertures of his body. In wicked and insensitive people, it does not last longer than a single snapping of the fingers, but in some it lasts for the time taken to eat a meal. As most sutras and tantras say that this unconscious state lasts for four and a half days, generally one should strive to show the luminosity for that length of time. The method of instruction. If he is able, he will work with himself from the instructions already given. But if he cannot by himself, then his guru, or a disciple of his guru, or a dharma brother or sister who was a close friend, should stay nearby and read aloud clearly the sequence of the signs of death. Now the sign of earth dissolving into water is present, water into fire, fire into air, air into consciousness. When the sequence is almost completed, he should be encouraged to adopt an attitude like this, O child of noble family, or if he was a guru, O sir, do not let your thoughts wander. This should be spoken softly in his ear. In the case of a dharma brother or sister or anyone else, one should call him by name and say these words. O child of noble family, that which is called death has now arrived, and you should adopt this attitude. I have arrived at the time of death, so now, by means of this death, I will adopt only the attitude of the enlightened state of mind, friendliness and compassion, and attain perfect enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings as limitless as space. With this attitude, at this special time, for the sake of all sentient beings, 
I will recognize the luminosity of death as the Dharmakaya, and attaining in that state the supreme realization of the great symbol, I will act for the good of all beings. If I do not attain this, I will recognize the Bardo state as it is, and attaining the indivisible great symbol form in the Bardo, I will act for the good of all beings as limitless as space in whatever way will influence them. Without letting go of this attitude, you should remember and practice whatever meditation teaching you have received in the past. These words should be spoken distinctly with the lips close to his ears, so as to remind him of his practice without letting his attention wander for even a moment. Then, when respiration has completely stopped, one should firmly press the arteries of sleep and remind him with these words, if he was a guru or a spiritual friend higher than oneself, Sir, now the basic luminosity is shining before you. Recognize it and rest in the practice. And one should show all others like this. O child of noble family, listen. Now the pure luminosity of the Dharmata is shining before you. Recognize it. O child of noble family, at this moment your state of mind is by nature pure emptiness. It does not possess any nature whatever, neither substance nor quality such as color, but it is pure emptiness. This is the Dharmata, the female Buddha Samantabhadri. But this state of mind is not just blank emptiness. It is unobstructed, sparkling, pure, and vibrant. This mind is the male Buddha, Samantabhadra. These two, your mind, whose nature is emptiness without any substance whatever, and your mind, which is vibrant and luminous, are inseparable. This is the Dharmakaya of the Buddha. This mind of yours is inseparable luminosity and emptiness in the form of a great mass of light. It has no birth or death, therefore it is the Buddha of immortal light. To recognize this is all that is necessary. When you recognize this pure nature of your mind as the Buddha, looking into your own mind is resting in the Buddha mind. This should be repeated three or seven times clearly and precisely. Firstly, it will remind him of what he has previously been shown by his guru. Secondly, he will recognize his own naked mind as the luminosity. And thirdly, having recognized himself, he will become inseparably united with the Dharmakaya and certainly attain liberation. If he recognizes the first luminosity, he will be liberated. But if it is feared that he has not recognized the first luminosity, then what is called the second luminosity will shine. And that comes when a little more than the time taken to eat a meal has passed after the respiration has ceased. According to good or bad karma, the prana escapes into the right or left nadi and comes out through the apertures of the body and the consciousness suddenly becomes clear. To say that this lasts for the time taken to eat a meal depends on whether he is sensitive or insensitive and on whether or not he has practiced. Then his consciousness emerges and he does not know whether he is dead or not. He will see his relatives gathered there just as before, and hear their cries. During this time, when the violent, confused projections of karma have not yet appeared, and the terrors of the lords of death have not yet come, the instructions should be given. Here there is a distinction between the perfection stage and the generation stage. If he was working on the perfection stage, one should call his name three times and repeat the instructions given above for showing the luminosity. If he was working on the generation stage, one should read aloud the sadhana and description of his yidam and remind him with these words, O child of noble family, meditate on your yidam and do not be distracted. Concentrate intensely on your yidam. Visualize him as an appearance without substance of his own, like the moon in water. Do not visualize him as having a solid form. If he is an ordinary person, one should show him by saying, Meditate on the Lord of Great Compassion. There is no doubt that those who have not recognized the bardo will grasp it by being shown in this way. But those who were not adept in meditation, even if they were shown by their guru while they were still alive, will not be able to clarify the bardo state by themselves, so that their guru or dharma brother or sister must make it clear. 
and it is necessary for someone to instruct those who cannot remember during the bardo of the moment before death because they were confused by serious illness, even though they were adept in meditation. It is also extremely necessary for those who, although they were formerly adept in meditation on this path, may enter into lower existences because they have broken the precepts or because their samaya practice has degenerated. It is best if he understands during the first bardo, but if he has not understood, his insight is awakened by the reminder in the second bardo, and he will be liberated. During the second bardo, his consciousness, which did not know whether he was dead or not, suddenly becomes clear. This is called the pure illusory body. If he understands the teaching at this time, the mother and son dharmatas meet, and he is no longer dominated by karma. Just as the light of the sun overcomes darkness, so the power of karma is overcome by the luminosity of the path, and liberation is attained. This, which is called the second bardo, flashes before the mental body, and the consciousness is able to hear again just as before. If this instruction is understood at this time, its purpose is fulfilled, and since the confused projections of karma have not yet appeared, he is able to direct himself anywhere. In this way, he is liberated by recognizing the luminosity during the second bardo, even if he did not recognize the basic luminosity. But if he is not liberated by it, then what is called the third bardo, the bardo of dharmata, arises. The confused projections of karma will appear in the third bardo, so it is most important that the great showing of the bardo of dharmata is read at this time, for it is very powerful and helpful. At this time, his relatives are crying and weeping. His share of food is stopped, his clothes are removed, his bed is taken to pieces, and so on. He can see them, but they cannot see him. And he can hear them calling him, but they cannot hear him calling them, so he goes away in despair. Three phenomena will appear at this time. Sounds, colored lights, and rays of light. And he will grow faint with fear, terror, and bewilderment. So at this moment, the great showing of the bardo of Dhammata should be read. Calling the dead person by name, one should say these words very distinctly. O child of noble family, listen carefully without distraction. There are six bardo states. The bardo of birth, the bardo of dreams, the bardo of samadhi meditation, the bardo of the moment before death, the bardo of Dharmata, and the bardo of becoming. O child of noble family, you will experience three bardo states. The bardo of the moment before death, the bardo of dharmata, and the bardo of becoming. Of these three, the luminosity of dharmata in the bardo of the moment before death shone until yesterday, but you did not recognize it, and so you had to wander here. Now you will experience the bardo of dharmata and the bardo of becoming. So recognize what I will show you without distraction. O child of noble family, now what is called death has arrived. You are not alone in leaving this world. It happens to everyone. So do not feel desire and yearning for this life. Even if you feel desire and yearning, you cannot stay. You can only wander in samsara. Do not desire. Do not yearn. Remember the three jewels. O child of noble family, whatever terrifying projections appear in the bardo of dharmata, do not forget these words, but go forward, remembering their meaning. The essential point is to recognize with them. Now when the bardo of dharmata dawns upon me, I will abandon all thoughts of fear and terror. I will recognize whatever appears as my projection and know it to be a vision of the bardo. Now that I have reached this crucial point, I will not fear the peaceful and wrathful ones, my own projections. Go forward saying these words clearly and distinctly and remembering their meaning. Do not forget them, for the essential point is to recognize with certainty that whatever appears, however terrifying, is your own projection. O child of noble family, when your body and mind separate, the dharmata will appear, pure and clear yet hard to discern, luminous and brilliant with terrifying brightness, 
shimmering like a mirage on a plain in spring. Do not be afraid of it. Do not be bewildered. This is the natural radiance of your own dharmata. Therefore, recognize it. A great roar of thunder will come from within the light, the natural sound of dharmata, like a thousand thunderclaps simultaneously. This is the natural sound of your dharmata. So do not be afraid or bewildered. You have what is called a mental body of unconscious tendencies. You have no physical body of flesh and blood. So whatever sounds, colors, and rays of light occur, they cannot hurt you, and you cannot die. It is enough simply to recognize them as your projections. Know this to be the bardo state. O oh, child of noble family, if you do not recognize them in this way as your own projections, whatever meditation practice you have done during your life, if you have not met with his teaching, the colored lights will frighten you, the sounds will bewilder you, and the rays of light will terrify you. If you do not understand this essential point of the teaching, you will not recognize the sounds, lights, and rays, and so you will wander in samsara. O child of noble family, after being unconscious for four and a half days, you will move on, and awakening from your faint, you will wonder what has happened to you. So recognize it as the bardo state. At that time, samsara is reversed, and everything you see appears as lights and images. The whole of space will shine with a blue light, and blessed Virochana will appear before you from the central realm, all-pervading circle. His body is white in color, he sits on a lion throne, holding an eight-spoked wheel in his hand and embracing his consort, the Queen of Vajra Space. The blue light of the Skanda of Consciousness in its basic purity, the wisdom of the Dharmadhatu, luminous, clear, sharp, and brilliant, will come towards you from the heart of Virochana and his consort and pierce you so that your eyes cannot bear it. At the same time, together with it, the soft white light of the gods will also come towards you and pierce you. At that time, under the influence of bad karma, you will be terrified and escape from the wisdom of the Dharma Dhatu with its bright blue light but you will feel an emotion of pleasure towards the soft white light of the gods. At that moment, do not be frightened and bewildered by the luminous, brilliant, very sharp and clear blue light of supreme wisdom, for it is the light ray of the Buddha, which is called the wisdom of the Dharma Dhatu. Be drawn to it with faith and devotion and supplicate it, thinking it is the light ray of blessed Virochana's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is blessed Virochana coming to invite you to the dangerous pathway of the bardo. It is the light ray of Virochana's compassion. Do not take pleasure in the soft white light of the gods. Do not be attracted to it or yearn for it. If you are attracted to it, you will wander in the realm of the gods and circle among the six kinds of existence. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it but feel longing for the bright blue light and repeat this inspiration prayer after me with intense concentration on blessed Virochana. When through intense ignorance I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the Dharmadhatu wisdom, may blessed Virochana go before me, his consort, the queen of Vajra space, behind me, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Virochana and his consort and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the central realm, the densely arrayed. But if, even after being shown, he is afraid of the lights and the rays because of his aggression and veils of error, and he escapes, and if he is confused even after saying the prayer, then on the second day, Vajrasattva's circle of deities will come to invite him, together with his bad karma, which leads to hell. So, to show him, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the second day, a white light, the purified element of water, will shine, and at the same time, the blessed Vajrasattva Akshobhya will appear before you from the eastern realm of complete joy. His body is blue in color, 
He holds a five-pointed vajra in his hand and sits on an elephant throne embracing his consort, Buddha Lochana. He is accompanied by the two male bodhisattvas, Kshitigarbha and Maitreya, and the two female bodhisattvas, Lasya and Pushpa, so that six Buddha's forms appear. The white light of the skanda of form in its basic purity, the mirror-like wisdom, dazzling white, luminous and clear, will come towards you from the heart of Vajrasattva and his consort and pierce you so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft smoky light of hell beings will also come towards you and pierce you. At that time, under the influence of aggression, you will be terrified and escape from the brilliant white light, but you will feel an emotion of pleasure towards the soft smoky light of the hell beings. At that moment, do not be afraid of the sharp, brilliant, luminous, and clear white light, but recognize it as wisdom. Be drawn to it with faith and longing, and supplicate it, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Vajrasattva's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is blessed Vajrasattva coming to invite you to the terrors of the bardo. It is the light ray hook of Vajrasattva's compassion, so feel longing for it. Do not take pleasure in the soft, smoky light of the hell beings. This is the inviting path of the veils of error accumulated by your violent aggression. If you are attracted to it, you will fall down into hell and sink into the muddy swamp of unbearable suffering from which there is never any escape. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it, but give up aggression. Do not be attracted to it. Do not yearn for it. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant white light and say this inspiration prayer with intense concentration on blessed Vajrasattva. When through intense aggression I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the mirror-like wisdom, may blessed Vajrasattva go before me, his concert Buddha Lochana behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Vajrasattva and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the eastern realm of complete joy. Yet even after being shown in this way, some people are afraid of the light ray hook of compassion because of their pride and veils of error, and they escape. So then on the third day, blessed Ratnasambhava's circle of deities will come to invite them together with the light path to the human realm. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the third day, a yellow light, the purified element of earth, will shine, and at the same time, blessed Ratnasambhava will appear before you from the yellow southern realm, the glorious. His body is yellow in color, he holds a wish-fulfilling jewel in his hand and sits on a horse throne, embracing his consort, Mamaki. He is accompanied by the two male bodhisattvas, Akashagarbha and Samantabhadra, and the two female bodhisattvas, Mala and Dupa, so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light. The yellow light of the skanda of feeling in its basic purity, the wisdom of equality, brilliant yellow, adorned with disks of light, luminous and clear, unbearable to the eyes, will come towards you from the heart of Ratnasambhava and his consort and pierce your heart so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft blue light of human beings will also pierce your heart. At that time, under the influence of pride, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp, clear yellow light, but you will feel an emotion of pleasure and attraction towards the soft blue light of human beings. At that moment, do not be afraid of the yellow light, luminous and clear, sharp and bright, but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest in it, relaxed, in a state of non-action, and be drawn to it with longing. If you recognize it as the natural radiance of your own mind, even though you do not feel devotion and do not say the inspiration prayer, all the forms and lights and rays will merge inseparably with you and you will attain enlightenment. If you cannot recognize it as the natural radiance of your own mind, supplicate it with devotion, thinking, 
It is the light ray of blessed Ratna Sambhava's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Ratna Sambhava's compassion, so feel longing for it. Do not take pleasure in the soft blue light of human beings. That is the inviting light path of unconscious tendencies accumulated by your intense pride. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the human realm and experience birth, old age, death, and suffering, and never escape from the muddy swamp of samsara. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not look at it, but give up pride, give up your unconscious tendencies. Do not be attracted to it, do not yearn for it. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant white light and say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on blessed Ratna Sambhava. When through intense pride I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the wisdom of equality, may blessed Ratna Sambhava go before me, his consort Mamaki behind me, help me to cross the Bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Ratna Sambhava and his consort and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the southern realm, the glorious. By being shown in this way, liberation is certain, however weak one's capacities may be. Yet even after being shown like this many times, there are people whose good opportunities have run out, such as those who have done great evil or let their Samaya practice degenerate, who will not recognize. Disturbed by desire and veils of error, they will be afraid of the sounds and lights and will escape. So then on the fourth day, blessed Amitabha's circle of deities will come to invite them, together with the light path of the hungry ghosts built from desire and meanness. To show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the fourth day, a red light, the purified element of fire, will shine. And at the same time, blessed Amitabha will appear before you from the red western realm, the blissful. His body is red in color. He holds a lotus in his hand and sits on a peacock throne, embracing his consort, Pandaravasini. He is accompanied by the two male bodhisattvas, Avalokiteshvara, and Manjushri, and the two female bodhisattvas, Gita and Aloka, so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light. The red light of the skanda of perception in its basic purity, the wisdom of discrimination, brilliant red, adorned with disks of light, luminous and clear, sharp and bright, will come from the heart of Amitabha and his consort and pierce your heart so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. Do not be afraid of it. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts will also shine. Do not take pleasure in it. Give up desire and yearning. At that time, under the influence of intense desire, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp, bright red light. But you will feel pleasure and attraction towards the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts. At that moment, do not fear the red light, sharp and brilliant, luminous and clear, but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest in it, relaxed, in a state of non-action. Be drawn to it with faith and longing. If you recognize it as your own natural radiance, even if you do not feel devotion and do not say the inspiration prayer, all the forms and lights and rays will merge inseparably with you, and you will attain enlightenment. If you cannot recognize it in this way, supplicate it with devotion, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Amitabha's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Amitabha's compassion. Feel devotion and do not escape. Even if you escape, it will stay with you inseparably. Do not be afraid. Do not be attracted to the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts. That is the light path of unconscious tendencies accumulated by your intense desire. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the realm of the hungry ghosts and experience unbearable misery from hunger and thirst. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not be attracted to it, but give up your unconscious tendencies. Do not yearn for it. 
feel longing for the luminous, brilliant red light and say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on blessed Amitabha and his consort. When through intense desire I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of discriminating wisdom, may blessed Amitabha go before me, his consort Pandaravasini behind me, and help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Amitabha, infinite light, with his consort, and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the Western realm, the blissful. It is impossible not to be liberated by this. Yet even after being shown in this way, sentient beings cannot give up their unconscious tendencies because of long habituation, and under the influence of envy and evil karma, they are afraid of the sounds and lights. They are not caught by the light ray hook of compassion, but wander downwards to the fifth day of the bardo state. So then, blessed Amoga City's circle of deities, with their light rays of compassion, will come to invite them. And the light path of the jealous gods, built from the emotion of envy, will also invite them. Then, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the fifth day, a green light, the purified element of air, will shine. And at the same time, blessed Amogasiddhi, lord of the circle, will appear before you from the green northern realm accumulated actions. His body is green in color. He holds a double vajra in his hand and sits on a throne of shang shang birds soaring in the sky, embracing his consort Samaya Tara. He is accompanied by the two male bodhisattvas, Vajrapani and Sarva Nivarna Vishkambin, and the two female bodhisattvas, Ganda and Naividya, so that six Buddha forms appear out of the space of rainbow light. The green light of the skanda of concept in its basic purity, the action accomplishing wisdom, brilliant green, luminous and clear, sharp and terrifying, adorned with disks of light, will come from the heart of Amoga City and his consort, and pierce your heart so that your eyes cannot bear to look at it. Do not be afraid of it. It is the spontaneous play of your own mind. So rest in the supreme state, free from activity and care, in which there is no near or far love or hate. At the same time, together with the wisdom light, the soft red light of the jealous gods caused by envy will also shine on you. Meditate so that there is no difference between love and hate. But if your intelligence is weak, then simply do not take pleasure in it. At that time, under the influence of intense envy, you will be terrified and escape from the sharp, brilliant green light. But you will also feel pleasure and attraction towards the soft red light of the jealous gods. At that moment, do not be afraid of the green light, sharp and brilliant, luminous and clear, but recognize it as wisdom. Let your mind rest in it, relaxed in a state of non-action and supplicated with devotion, thinking, it is the light ray of blessed Amoga City's compassion. I take refuge in it. It is the light ray hook of blessed Amoga City's compassion called the action accomplishing wisdom. So long for it and do not escape. Even if you escape, it will stay with you inseparably. Do not be afraid of it. Do not be attracted to the soft red light of the jealous gods. That is the inviting path of karma accumulated by your intense envy. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the realm of the jealous gods and experience unbearable misery from fighting and quarreling. It is an obstacle blocking the path of liberation, so do not be attracted to it, but give up your unconscious tendencies. Feel longing for the luminous, brilliant green light and say this inspiration prayer with intense, one-pointed concentration of blessed Amoga City and his consort. When through intense envy I wander in samsara, on the luminous light path of action accomplishing wisdom. May blessed Amoga City go before me, his consort Samaya Tara behind me, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of blessed Amoga City and his consort and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the northern realm perfected actions. 
however weak his good karmic results may be, by being shown like this in many stages, if he does not recognize at one, he will at another, so it is impossible not to be liberated. But even after being shown in this way many times, those who have been habituated to many unconscious tendencies for a long time and have never become familiar with the pure visions of the five wisdoms are carried backwards by their bad tendencies even though they are shown. So they are not caught by the light ray hook of compassion, but become bewildered and frightened by the lights and rays and wander downwards. So then on the sixth day the Buddhas of the five families with their consorts and attendant deities will appear simultaneously and at the same time the lights of the six realms will also shine simultaneously. To show him one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. Even though you were shown when the light of each of the five families appeared until yesterday, under the influence of bad tendencies, you were bewildered by them, and so you have remained here until now. If you had recognized the natural radiance of the wisdoms of those five families as your own projection, you would have dissolved into rainbow light in the body of one of the five families and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha. But because you did not recognize, you have gone on wandering here until this time. So now watch without distraction. Now the five families will appear all together, and what is called the four wisdoms combined will come to invite you. Recognize them. O child of noble family, the four colored lights of the four purified elements will shine. At the same time, the Buddha Varochana and his consort will appear just as before from the central realm all-pervading circle. The Buddha Vajrasattva with his consort and attendants will appear from the eastern realm complete joy. The Buddha Ratnasambhava, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the southern realm, the glorious. The Buddha Amitabha, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the western blissful realm of lotuses. And the Buddha Amoga Siddhi, with his consort and attendants, will appear from the northern realm, perfected actions, out of the space of rainbow light. O child of noble family, Beyond those Buddhas of the five families, the wrathful guardians of the gates will also appear. Vijaya, the victorious. Yamantaka, destroyer of death. Hayagriva, the horse-necked. And Amrita Kundali, coil of nectar. And the female guardians of the gates. Ankusha, the hook. Pasha, the noose. Shunkala, the chain. And Ganta, the bell. The six sages, the blessed ones, will also appear. Indra, of the hundred sacrifices, sage of the gods. Vemachitra, splendid robe, sage of the jealous gods. The lion of the shakyas, sage of human beings. Dhruva Singha, steadfast lion, sage of the animals. Jvala Mukha, flaming mouth, sage of the hungry ghosts. And Dharmaraja, the Dharma king sage of the hell beings. Samantabhadra and Samantabhadri, the all-good father and mother of all the Buddhas, will also appear. These 42 deities of the Sambhogakaya will emerge from within your own heart and appear before you. They are the pure form of your own projections, so recognize them. O child of noble family, those realms too do not exist anywhere else but lie in the four directions of your heart with the center as fifth, and now they emerge from within your heart and appear before you. Those images, too, do not come from anywhere else, but are the primordial, spontaneous play of your mind. So recognize them in this way. O child of noble family, those images are neither large nor small, but perfectly proportioned. They each have their own adornments, their costume, their color, their posture, their throne, and their symbol. They are spread out in five couples. Each of the five is encircled by a halo of the five colored lights. The whole mandala, the male and female deities of the families, will appear completely, all at once. Recognize them, for they are your yidams. O child of noble family, from the heart of those Buddhas of the five families and their consorts, the light rays of the four wisdoms will each shine upon your heart very fine and clear like sunbeams stretched out. 
First the wisdom of the Dharmadhatu, a cloth of luminous white light rays, brilliant and terrifying, will shine upon your heart from the heart of Virochana. In this cloth of light rays a sparkling white disk will appear, very clear and bright, like a mirror facing downwards, adorned with five disks like itself, ornamented with disks and smaller disks, so that it has no center or circumference. From the heart of Vajrasattva, on the luminous blue cloth of the mirror-like wisdom, will appear a blue disk like a turquoise bowl, face downwards, adorned with disks and smaller disks. From the heart of Ratnasambhava, on the luminous yellow cloth of the wisdom of equality, will appear a yellow disk like a golden bowl, face downwards, adorned with disks and smaller disks. From the heart of Amitabha, on the luminous red cloth of the wisdom of discrimination, will appear a sparkling red disk like a coral bowl face downwards, shining with the deep light of wisdom, very clear and bright, adorned with five disks like itself, ornamented with disks and smaller disks, so that it has no center or circumference. They too will shine upon your heart. O child of noble family, these also have arisen out of the spontaneous play of your own mind. They have not come from anywhere else. So do not be attracted to them, do not fear them, but stay relaxed in a state free from thought. In that state, all the images and light rays will merge with you and you will attain enlightenment. O child of noble family, the green light of action accomplishing wisdom does not appear because the energy of your wisdom is not yet fully matured. O child of noble family, this is called the experience of the four wisdoms combined the passageway of Vajrasattva. At this time, remember your guru's previous teachings on the showing. If you remember the meaning of the showing, you will have faith in your earlier experiences and so you will recognize them, like the meeting of mother and son or like seeing old friends again. As though cutting off doubt, you will recognize your own projections and enter the pure, changeless path of the Dharmata. And through that faith, a continuous meditative state will arise and you will dissolve into the great self-existing form of wisdom and become a Sambhogakaya Buddha who never falls back. O child of noble family, together with the wisdom lights, the lights of the impure, illusory six realms will shine. The soft white light of the gods, the soft red light of the jealous gods, the soft blue light of human beings, the soft green light of the animals, the soft yellow light of the hungry ghosts, and the soft smoky light of hell beings. These six will shine together with the pure wisdom lights. At that moment, do not grasp or be attracted to any of them, but stay relaxed in a state free from thought. If you are afraid of the pure wisdom lights and attracted to the impure lights of the six realms, you will take on the body of a creature of the six realms, and you will grow weary, for there is never any escape from the great ocean of the misery of samsara. O child of noble family, if you have not been shown by a guru's instruction, you will be afraid of those images and pure wisdom lights and attracted to the impure lights of samsara. Do not do so, but feel devotion to the pure wisdom lights, sharp and brilliant. Think with devotion the light rays of the wisdom and compassion of the blessed ones, the Buddhas of the five families, have come to seize me with compassion. I take refuge in them. Do not be attracted to the lights of the six realms of illusion. Do not yearn for them but say this inspiration prayer with intense one-pointed concentration on the Buddhas of the five families and their consorts. When through the five poisons I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the four wisdoms combined, may the conquerors, the five families, go before me, the consorts of the five families behind me, save me from the light paths of the six impure realms, help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the five pure Buddha realms. By saying this inspiration prayer, the superior person recognizes his own projections and merging with non-duality becomes a Buddha. The average person recognizes himself through intense devotion and attains liberation. Even the inferior person prevents rebirth in the six realms by the purifying power of the prayer and understanding the meaning of the four wisdoms combined attains enlightenment by the passageway of Vajrasattva. By being shown clearly and precisely in this way, many sentient beings will recognize and be liberated. But some, such as inferior people in uncivilized places and wicked people who have no experience of Dharma at all, 
and those who have let their samaya practice degenerate are confused by their karma and do not recognize even when they are shown, but wander downwards. So on the seventh day, the vidyadaras will come from the pure realm of space to invite them, and at the same time, the light path of the animals produced from the emotion of ignorance will also meet them. At that time, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the seventh day, a pure, many-colored light will shine in your unconscious mind, and the vidyadaras will come from the pure realm of space to invite you. In the center of the mandala, filled with rainbow light, he who is called the unsurpassable, fully developed Vidyadara, Lotus Lord of the Dance, will appear, his body bright with the five colors, embracing his consort, the red Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the east of the mandala, he who is called the Vidyadara, established in the stages, will appear, white in color, with a radiant, smiling face, embracing his consort, the white Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and his skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the south of the mandala, he who is called the Lord of Life, Vidyadara, will appear, yellow in color, with beautiful form, embracing his consort, the yellow Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the west of the mandala, he who is called the Great Symbol, Vidyadara, will appear, red in color, with a radiant smiling face, embracing his consort, the red Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. From the north of the mandala, he who is called the spontaneously arisen Vidyadara will appear, green in color, his expression both angry and smiling, embracing his consort, the green Dakini, dancing with a crescent knife and a skull full of blood, gesturing and gazing at the sky. Beyond these Vidyadaras will appear countless crowds of Dakinis, Dakinis of the eight charnel grounds, Dakinis of the four families, Dakinis of the three worlds, Dakinis of the ten directions, Dakinis of the twenty-four places of pilgrimage, male and female warriors and servants, and all the male and female protectors of Dharma, wearing the six bone ornaments with drums, thigh-bone trumpets, skull drums, banners made from the skins of youths, canopies made from human skin, ribbons of human skin, and incense made from human flesh, with countless different kinds of musical instruments, filling all the regions of the universe so that they rock and tremble and shake, making all the instruments vibrate with music so as to split one's head, dancing various dances, they will come to invite those who have kept the Samaya practice and to punish those who have let it degenerate. O child of noble family, in the realm of the unconscious, the pure innate wisdom, shining with the five colored lights like colored threads twisted together, flashing, vibrating, shimmering, luminous and clear, sharp and terrifying, will come from the hearts of the five Vidyadara lords and pierce your heart so that the eye cannot bear it. At the same time, the soft green light of the animals will also shine together with a wisdom light. At that time, under the influence of confusion caused by unconscious tendencies, you will be afraid and escape from the five-colored light, but you will be attracted to the soft light of the animals. At that moment, do not be afraid of the bright, sharp, five-colored light. Do not fear it, but recognize it as wisdom. From within the light, all the spontaneous sounds of the Dharma will come like the roar of a thousand thunderclaps. It rolls and thunders and resounds with war cries and the penetrating sound of wrathful mantras. Do not be afraid of it. Do not escape. Do not fear. Recognize it as the play of your mind, your own projection. Do not be attracted to the soft green light of the animals. Do not yearn for it. If you are attracted to it, you will fall into the animal realm of ignorance and experience the extreme suffering of stupidity, dumbness, and slavery from which there is no escape. So do not be attracted to it. Feel longing for the clear, bright light of the five colors and concentrate one-pointedly on the blessed Vidyadaras, the divine teachers, thinking, These Vidyadaras with the warriors and Dakinis have come to invite me to the pure realm of space. Please all give thought to sentient beings like me who have not gathered merit and have not been caught, although until today the light rays of compassion of so many deities of the five families of Buddhas of past, present, and future 
reached out. Alas for one like me. Now all you Vidyadaras, do not let me go any lower than this, but grasp me with your hooks of compassion and pull me up quickly to the pure realm of space. With intense, one-pointed concentration, say this inspiration prayer. May the divine Vidyadaras think of me and with great love lead me on the path. When through intense tendencies I wander in samsara on the luminous light path of the innate wisdom, may Vidyadaras and warriors go before me, their consorts, the Dakinis behind me, help me to cross the Bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the pure realm of space. By saying this inspiration prayer with deep devotion, he will dissolve into rainbow light in the heart of the divine Vidyadaras and be born in the pure realm of space. There is no doubt. All the types of spiritual friends, too, recognize as a result of this and are all liberated. Even those with bad unconscious tendencies are certainly liberated here. The end of the first part of the great liberation through hearing, showing the luminosity during the bardo at the moment before death and showing during the peaceful bardo of the dharmata, iti samaya gya gya gya. Now it will be taught how the bardo of the wrathful deities appears. Up to now there have been seven stages in the dangerous pathway of the bardo of the peaceful deities. And by being shown at each of the stages, even if he has not recognized at one, he will have at another. And boundless attainments of liberation occur. But although many are liberated like this, sentient beings are great in number. Bad karma is very strong. The veils of error are heavy and thick. The unconscious tendencies last for a long time, and this cycle of confusion and ignorance neither wears out nor increases. So there are many who are not liberated, but wander downwards, although they have been shown accurately in this way. So then, after the meeting by the peaceful deities and the Vidyadaras and Dakinis is over, the 58 blazing, blood-drinking, wrathful deities will appear, transformed from the previous peaceful deities. But now they are not like they were before. This is the bardo of the wrathful deities, so one is overpowered by intense fear and it becomes more difficult to recognize. The mind has no self-control and feels faint and dizzy, but if there is a little recognition, liberation is easy, because with the arising of overwhelming fear, the mind has no time to be distracted, and so it concentrates one-pointedly. If one does not meet with this kind of teaching now, even an ocean of learning will be of no use. At this point, even teachers who observe the monastic rule and great philosophers are confused and do not recognize, so they go on wandering in samsara. It is even more so for ordinary people. Escaping from the intense fear, they fall into the lower realms and suffer misery. But a tantric yogin, even if he is the lowest of the low, will recognize the blood-drinking deities as yidams as soon as he sees them, like meeting old friends. So he will trust them, and merging inseparably with them, become a Buddha. The secret is that in the human world, he visualized the forms of these blood-drinking deities and worshipped them. And even if he only looked at their images drawn in pictures or three-dimensional figures, and so on, he will recognize the forms appearing here and attain liberation. But however much effort the philosophers and teachers who observed the rule made in religious practice, and however clever they were at preaching the scriptures in the human world, when they die, there will not be any signs such as jewel-like relics, rainbows, and so on. While they were alive, they cast abuse at the tantras, and could not accommodate them in their minds. They did not know the tantric deities. Therefore, they cannot recognize them when they appear in a bardo either. Suddenly seeing something they have never seen before, they think of it as an enemy and feel aggression towards it, and as a result, they go to the lower realms. That is the reason why, however good those philosophers and observers of the rule were, since they did not practice the tantras, signs such as various kinds of jewel-like relics and rainbows do not occur among them. A follower of Tantra, even if he is the lowest of the low, however coarsely he behaved in this world and however uncultured and unrefined he was, even if he was unable to practice the Tantric teachings, just because he had faith in the Tantras and did not have any doubt or disbelief, will attain liberation at this point. So although his behavior was unconventional in the human world, when he dies at least one sign, such as jewel-like relics or rainbows, will appear. This is because this Tantric teaching has very great power. 
Tantric yogins who are above average, who have meditated on the visualization and complete practices, and practiced recitation of heart mantras and so on, need not wander so far down in the bardo of Dharmata. But as soon as they stop breathing, the vidyadras, warriors, and dakinis will invite them to the pure realm of space. As a sign of this, the sky clears and they dissolve into rainbow light and rain of flowers, fragrance of incense, sounds of musical instruments in the air, light rays, jewel-like relics, and so on appear. These are the signs. Therefore, those philosophers and observers of the rule, followers of Tantra who have let their Samaya practice degenerate, and all ordinary people have no means except this great liberation through hearing. Meditators who have practiced the great symbol and great completion meditations and so on will recognize the luminosity in the bardo of the moment before death and reach the Dharmakaya, so it is absolutely unnecessary to read this great liberation through hearing. If they recognize the luminosity during the bardo of the moment before death, they will reach the Dharmakaya. If they recognize during the bardo of Dharmata, when the peaceful and wrathful deities appear, they will reach the Sambhogakaya. If they recognize during the bardo of becoming, they will reach the Nurmanakaya and be born in a better situation, where they will meet with this teaching. And since the results of actions continue into the next life, that is why this great liberation through hearing is a teaching which enlightens without meditation, a teaching which liberates just by being heard, a teaching which leads great sinners on the secret path, a teaching which severs ignorance in one moment, a profound teaching which gives perfect instantaneous enlightenment so that sentient beings whom it has reached cannot possibly go to lower existences. Both it and the liberation through wearing should be read aloud, for the two combined are like a golden mandala inlaid with turquoise. Now that the great necessity of the liberation through hearing has been taught in this way, it will be shown how the bardo of the wrathful deities appears. Calling the dead person three times by name, one should say these words. O child of noble family, Listen without distraction. Although the bardo of the peaceful deities has already appeared, you did not recognize, so you have wandered further on to hear. Now on the eighth day, the blood-drinking, wrathful deities will appear. Recognize them without being distracted. O child of noble family, he who is called glorious great Buddha Haruka will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you actually and clearly. His body is wine-colored, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one wine-colored. His body blazes like a mass of light. His nine eyes gaze into yours with a wrathful expression. His eyebrows are like flashes of lightning. His teeth gleam like copper. He laughs aloud with shouts of ah-la-la ah, and ha-ha, and sends out loud whistling noises of shoo. His red-gold hair flies upwards blazing. His heads are crowned with dried skulls and the sun and moon. His body is garlanded with black serpents and fresh skulls. His six hands hold a wheel in the first hand on the right, an axe in the middle, and a sword in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a plowshare in the middle, and a skull cap in the last. His consort Buddha, Krodishvari, embraces his body with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. He sends out loud palatal sounds and roaring sounds of thunder. Flames of wisdom shoot out from between the blazing vajra hairs of his body. He stands on a throne supported by garudas with one pair of legs bent and the other stretched out. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Vairochana with his consort, so do not fear. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam and merging inseparably with it become a Buddha in the Sambhogakaya. But if he is afraid of it and escapes and so does not recognize, then on the ninth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Vajra family will come to invite him. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. 
On the ninth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Vajra family, called Blessed Vajra Haruka, will emerge from the eastern quarter of your brain and appear before you. His body is dark blue in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one blue. His six hands hold a Vajra in the first on the right, a skull cap in the middle, and an axe in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a plowshare in the last. His consort, Vajra Krodishvari, embraces his body, with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Vajrasattva with his consort, so have devotion. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam and, merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha in the Sambhogakaya. But if those whose karmic darkness is great are afraid of it and escape, and so do not recognize, then on the tenth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Ratna family will come to invite them. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the tenth day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Ratna family, called Blessed Ratna Haruka, will appear before you from the southern quarter of your brain. His body is dark yellow in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one blazing dark yellow. His six hands hold a jewel in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a club in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a trident in the last. His consort, Ratna Krodishvari, embraces his body with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Ratna Sambhava with his consort, so feel longing. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam, and merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha. But if, even after being shown like this, he is pulled back by evil unconscious tendencies and is afraid and escapes, and so does not recognize the Yidam, if even when he sees Yamantaka he does not recognize him, then on the eleventh day the blood-drinking manifestation of the Padma family will come to invite him. So, to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. On the eleventh day, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Padma family, called Blessed Padma Haruka, will emerge from the western quarter of your brain and appear before you clearly in union with his consort. His body is dark red in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one blue, and the center one dark red. His six hands hold a lotus in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a rod in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup filled with blood in the middle, and a small drum in the last. His consort, Padma Krodishvari, embraces his body, with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Be joyful and recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid, do not be terrified. He is really blessed Amitabha with his consort, so feel longing. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize it to be the Yidam, and merging inseparably with it, become a Buddha. But if, even after being shown like this, he is pulled back by evil unconscious tendencies, and is afraid and escapes, and so cannot recognize the Yidam, then on the twelfth day the blood-drinking manifestations of the Karma family will come, with the Gauris, Pishachis, and Yoginis to invite him. If he does not recognize, he will be afraid, so to show him again one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. When the twelfth day has come, the blood-drinking manifestation of the Karma family, called Blessed Karma Haruka, will emerge from the northern quarter of your brain and appear before you clearly in union with his consort. 
His body is dark green in color, with three heads, six arms, and four legs spread wide apart. The right face is white, the left one red, and the center one majestic, dark green. His six hands hold a sword in the first on the right, a trident bearing three human heads in the middle, and a rod in the last, a bell in the first on the left, a skull cup in the middle, and a plowshare in the last. His consort, Karma Krodishvari, embraces his body, with her right hand clasped around his neck and her left hand holding a skull full of blood to his mouth. Do not be afraid of him. Do not be terrified. Do not be bewildered. Recognize him as the form of your own mind. He is your Yidam, so do not be afraid. He is really blessed Amogasiddhi with his consort. So feel intense devotion. Recognition and liberation are simultaneous. When this is said, he will recognize the Yidam and merging inseparably with it become a Buddha. Through the instructions of his guru, he will recognize them as his own projections, the play of the mind, and he will be liberated. It is just like seeing a stuffed lion, for instance. He feels very frightened if he does not know that it is really only a stuffed lion, but if someone shows him what it is, he is astonished and no longer afraid. So here, too, he feels terrified and bewildered when the blood-drinking deities appear with their huge bodies and thick limbs, filling the whole of space. But as soon as he is shown, he recognizes them as his own projections, or as yidams, the luminosity on which he has meditated before, and the self-existing luminosity which arises later, mother and son, merge together, and like meeting a man he used to know very well, the self-liberating luminosity of his own mind spontaneously arises before him, and he is self-liberated. If he does not receive this showing, even a good person can turn back from here and wander in samsara. Then the eight wrathful gauris and the pishachis with various heads will emerge from within his own brain and appear before him. So to show him again, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen without distraction. The eight gauris will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them. From the eastern quarter of your brain, white gauri will appear to you holding a corpse as a club in her right hand and a skull cup filled with blood in her left hand. Do not be afraid. From the south, yellow gauri, shooting an arrow from a bow. From the west, red pramoha, holding a sea monster banner. From the north, black vetali, holding a vajra and a skull cup filled with blood. From the southeast, orange pukasi, holding entrails in her right hand and eating them with her left. From the southwest, dark green gasmari, drinking from a skull cup filled with blood, which she holds in her left hand and stirs with a vajra in her right hand. From the northwest, pale yellow chandali, tearing a head and body apart, holding the heart in her right hand and eating the body with her left. From the northeast, dark blue shmashani, tearing a head and body apart and eating. These eight gauries of the directions, surrounding the five blood-drinking harukas, will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, listen without distraction. After them, in turn, the eight pishachis of the holy places will emerge and appear before you. From the east, Singamuka, wine-colored, lion-headed, with her two hands crossed on her breast, holding a corpse in her mouth and tossing her mane. From the south, Vyagrimuka, red, tiger-headed, with her two arms crossed pointing downwards her eyes staring and her teeth snarling. From the west, Shurgala Mukha, black, fox-headed, holding a razor in her right hand and entrails in her left, eating them and licking the blood. From the north, Shvana Mukha, dark blue, wolf-headed, carrying a corpse to her mouth with both hands, her eyes staring. From the southeast, Grudra Mukha, pale yellow, vulture-headed, carrying a large human corpse over her shoulder and holding a skeleton in her hand. From the southwest, Kankamuka, dark red, hawk-headed, carrying a large flayed skin over her shoulder. From the northwest, Kakamuka, black, raven-headed, holding a skull cup in her left hand and a sword in her right and eating a heart and lungs. From the northeast, Ulumuka, dark blue, owl-headed, holding a vajra in her right hand and a sword in her left and eating. These eight pishachis of the holy places, surrounding the five blood-drinking harukas, will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Do not be afraid of them.
recognize whatever appears as the play of the mind, your own projections. O child of noble family, the four goddesses of the gates will also emerge from within your brain and appear before you, so recognize them. From the eastern quarter of your brain, Ankusha, white, tiger-headed, holding a goad and a skull cup filled with blood, will emerge and appear before you. From the south, Pasha, yellow, sow-headed, holding a noose. From the west, Shunkala, red, lion-headed, holding an iron chain. And from the north, Ganta, green, serpent-headed, holding a bell. These four goddesses of the gates will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Recognize them as Yidams. O child of noble family, after the thirty wrathful Harukas, the twenty-eight yogins will emerge in turn from within your brain and appear before you, with various heads and bearing various symbols. Do not be afraid of them, but recognize whatever appears as the play of your mind, your own projections. At this moment of reaching the crucial point, remember the instructions of your guru. O child of noble family, from the east, the six yoginis of the east will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Rakshasi, demoness, wine-colored, with the head of a yak, holding a vajra in her hand. Brahmi, orange, serpent-headed, holding a lotus in her hand. Mahadevi, great goddess, dark green, leopard-headed, holding a trident in her hand. Lobha, greedy, blue, mongoose-headed, holding a wheel in her right hand. Kumari, virgin, red, with the head of a yellow bear, holding a short spear in her hand. And Indrani, white, with the head of a brown bear, holding a noose of entrails in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, from the south, the six yoginis of the south will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Vajra, yellow, with the head of a pig, holding a razor in her hand. Shanti, peace, red, with the head of a sea monster, holding a vase in her hand. Amrita, nectar of immortality, red, scorpion-headed, holding a lotus in her hand. Chandra, moon, white, hawk-headed, holding a vajra in her hand. Danda, club, dark green, fox-headed, holding a club in her hand. And Rakshasi, demoness, dark yellow, tiger-headed, holding a skull full of blood in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, from the west, the six yoginis of the west will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. Bakshini, eater, Dark green, vulture-headed, holding a club in her hand. Rati, pleasure, red, horse-headed, holding a large corpse's trunk in her hand. Mahabala, great strength, white, Garuda-headed, holding a club in her hand. Rakshasi, demoness, red, dog-headed, cutting with a Vajra razor in her hand. Kama, desire, red, with the head of a hupo, shooting an arrow from a bow in her hand. And Vasaraksha, protectress of wealth, dark green, with the head of a deer, holding a vase in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, from the north the six yoginis of the north will emerge from within your own brain and appear before you. Vayudevi, wind goddess, blue, wolf-headed, waving a flag in her hand. Nari, Woman, red, buffalo-headed, holding a stake in her hand. Varahi, sow, black, with the head of a sow, holding a noose of teeth in her hand. Vajra, red, with the head of a crow, holding a child's skin in her hand. Mahahastini, elephant, dark green, elephant-headed, holding a large corpse in her hand and drinking its blood. And Varuna Devi, water goddess, blue, Serpent-headed, holding a noose of snakes in her hand. Do not be afraid of them. O child of noble family, the four yoginis of the gates will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. From the east, white vajra, cuckoo-headed, holding an iron hook in her hand. And from the south, yellow vajra, goat-headed, holding a noose in her hand. 
From the west, Redvadra, lion-headed, holding an iron chain in her hand. And from the north, dark green Vadra, serpent-headed, holding a bell in her hand. These four yoginis of the gates will emerge from within your brain and appear before you. These twenty-eight yoginis arise spontaneously from the play of the self-existing form of the wrathful harukas, so recognize them. O child of noble family, the Dharmakaya appears as the peaceful deities out of part of the emptiness. Recognize it. The Sambhogakaya appears as the wrathful deities out of part of the luminosity. So recognize it. If at this time, when the fifty-eight blood-drinking deities emerge from within your own brain and appear before you, you know that whatever appears has arisen out of your own radiant insight, you will immediately become a Buddha inseparable from the blood-drinking deities. O child of noble family, if you do not recognize in this way, you will be afraid of them and escape, and so go on to more suffering. If you do not recognize in this way, you will see all the blood-drinking deities as lords of death, and you will fear them. You will feel terrified and bewildered and faint. Your own projections will turn into demons, and you will wander in samsara. But if you are neither attracted nor afraid, you will not wander in samsara. O child of noble family, the largest body of these peaceful and wrathful deities are like the whole sky. The medium ones are like Mount Meru, and the smallest ones are like eighteen of our bodies, one on top of the other. So do not be afraid of them. All phenomena appear as lights and images. By recognizing all these appearances as the natural radiance of your own mind, your own radiance will merge inseparably with the lights and images, and you will become a Buddha. O child, whatever you see, however terrifying it is, recognize it as your own projection. Recognize it as the luminosity, the natural radiance of your own mind. If you recognize in this way, you will become a Buddha at that very moment, there is no doubt. What is called perfect instantaneous enlightenment will arise on the spot. Remember, O child of noble family, if you do not recognize now and are still afraid, all the peaceful deities will appear in the form of Mahakala, and all the wrathful deities will appear in the form of the Dharma King, the Lord of Death, and you will wander in samsara with all your projections turned into demons. O child of noble family, if you do not recognize your own projections, even though you have practiced Dharma for an eon and are learned in all the sutras and tantras, you will not become a Buddha. But if you recognize your projections, with one secret and one word, you will become a Buddha. If you do not recognize your projections, they will appear in the form of the Dharma King, the Lord of Death, in the bardo of Dharmata, as soon as you are dead. The largest bodies of the Lords of Death fill the whole sky, and the medium ones are like Mount Meru. They will come filling the whole universe. With teeth biting the lower lip, glassy-eyed, their hair tied on top of their heads, with huge bellies and thin necks, holding the records of karma in their hands, shouting, Strike! and Kill! licking up brains, tearing heads from bodies, pulling out internal organs. In this way they will come, filling the whole universe. O child of noble family, when projections appear like this, do not be afraid. You have a mental body of unconscious tendencies, so even if you are killed and cut into pieces, you cannot die. You are really the natural form of emptiness, so there is no need to fear. The lords of death, too, arise out of your own radiant mind. They have no solid substance. Emptiness cannot be harmed by emptiness. Be certain that the external peaceful and wrathful deities, the blood-drinking harukas, the animal-headed deities, the rainbow light, the terrifying forms of the lords of death, and so on, have no substantiality. They only arise out of the spontaneous play of your own mind. If you understand this, all fear is naturally liberated, and merging inseparably, you will become a Buddha. If you recognize in this way, they are your yidams. Think with intense longing. They have come to invite me in the dangerous pathway of the bardo. I take refuge in them. Remember the three jewels. Remember your own yidam. Call his name and supplicate him with these words. I am wandering in the bardo, so be my rescuer. Seize me with compassion, O precious yidam. Call your guru's name and supplicate him. I am wandering in the bardo, so be my rescuer. With your compassion, do not abandon me. Supplicate the blood-drinking deities with longing and say this inspiration prayer. When through strong unconscious tendencies I wander in samsara, in the luminosity of abandoning all fear, 
May the blessed ones, peaceful and wrathful, go before me. The wrathful goddesses, queens of space, behind me. Help me to cross the bardo's dangerous pathway and bring me to the perfect Buddha state. When parted from beloved friends, wandering along, my own projections' empty forms appear. May the Buddhas send out the power of their compassion so that the bardo's terrors do not come. When the five luminous lights of wisdom shine, fearlessly may I recognize myself. When the forms of the peaceful and wrathful ones appear, fearless and confident, may I recognize the bardo. When I suffer through the power of evil karma, may my yidam clear away all suffering. When the sound of dharmata roars like a thousand thunders, may it all become the sound of the six syllables. When I follow my karma without a refuge, may the Lord of great compassion be my refuge. When I suffer the karma of unconscious tendencies, may the samadhi of bliss and luminosity arise. May the five elements not rise up as enemies. May I see the realms of the five Buddhas. Say this inspiration prayer with deep devotion. All fears will disappear, and you will certainly become a Buddha in the Sambhukaya, so it is very important. Do not be distracted. These words should be repeated three or up to seven times. However great the sins and however bad the remaining karma may be, it is impossible not to be liberated. But if whatever is done for them, they do not recognize, then they have to wander in the third bardo, the bardo of becoming. So its showing will be taught in detail below. Most people, whether they were much or little adept in meditation, are very confused by fear during the bardo of the moment before death and so they have no means except this liberation through hearing. To those who have meditated a lot, the bardo of dharmata comes suddenly when their mind and body separate. Those who have recognized their own mind and become experienced while they were alive are very strong when the luminosity appears during the bardo of the moment before death. Therefore, practice during life is most important. And those who, while they were alive, have meditated on the visualization and complete practices of the tantric deities are very strong when the peaceful and wrathful visions appear during the bardo of dharmata. Therefore, it is extremely important to train the mind thoroughly in this liberation through hearing in the bardo, especially during one's life. It should be grasped, it should be perfected, it should be read aloud, it should be memorized properly, it should be practiced three times a day without fail. The meaning of its words should be made completely clear in the mind. Its words and meaning should not be forgotten even if a hundred murderers were to appear and chase one. Since this is called the great liberation through hearing, even people who have committed the five deadly sins will certainly be liberated if they only hear it. Therefore, it should be read aloud among great crowds and spread afar. Even if it has been heard like this only once and the meaning not understood, in the bardo state the mind becomes nine times more clear, so then it will be remembered with not even a single word forgotten. Therefore, it should be told to all during their life. It should be read at the bedside of the sick. It should be read beside the bodies of all the dead. It should be spread far and wide. To meet with it is great good fortune. It is hard to meet with except for those who have cleared away their darkness and gathered merit. If one hears it, one is liberated simply by not disbelieving. Therefore, it should be greatly cherished. It draws out the essence of all dharma. The end of the showing of the bardo of dharmata called the Great Liberation Through Hearing, the bardo teaching which liberates just by being heard and seen, Sarva Mangalam. Respectful homage to the deities, gurus, yidams, and dakinis. May they cause liberation in the bardo. In the Great Liberation Through Hearing, the bardo of dharmata has been taught above. Now comes the remainder of the bardo of becoming, Although the bardo of dharmata has been shown many times before this, apart from those who were adept in meditation on dharma and have good karmic results, because of fear and bad karma, recognition is difficult for those who were not adept or who were very wicked. So from about the tenth day onwards, they should be reminded again in these words. O child of noble family, listen well and understand. Hell beings, gods, and the bardo body are born spontaneously. When the peaceful and wrathful deities appeared in the bardo of Dharmata, you did not recognize them, so you fainted with fear after five and a half days. But when you recovered, your consciousness grew clear, and a body like your former one rose up. It is said in the Tantra, with the former and future material body of the bardo of becoming, 
complete with all the senses, wandering without obstruction, possessing the power of miracles resulting from karma, seen by the pure eyes of gods with the same nature. Here, former means that you have a body like your former one of flesh and blood because of your memories of it, but it is also radiant and has some marks like a body of the golden age. This is the experience of a mental body, so it is called the mental body of the bardo experience. At this time, if you are going to be born as a god, you will experience the realm of the gods, and whatever you are going to be born as, jealous god, human, animal, hungry ghost, or hell being, you will have that experience. Therefore, former means thinking, for up to four and a half days, that you have a material body of memories of your former one. And future means that after that you will have experiences of wherever you are going to be born later. So they say former and future. Whatever projections arise at this time, do not follow them or be attracted to them or yearn for them. If you are attracted to them or yearn for them, you will wander in the six realms and suffer misery. Although the projections of the bardo of Dharmata appeared until yesterday, you did not recognize them, so you had to wander here. Now, if you are able to, meditate undistractedly. Rest in the pure, naked mind, luminosity emptiness, which your guru has shown you, relaxed in a state of non-grasping and non-action. You will attain liberation and not enter a womb. If you cannot recognize, visualize your yidam or your guru above your head and feel intense devotion very strongly. This is very important. Again and again, do not be distracted. So one should say, if he recognizes this, he will be liberated and not wander in the six realms. But under the influence of bad karma, it is difficult to recognize, so one should say these words. O child of noble family, listen with undistracted mind. Complete with all the senses means that even if you were blind, deaf, lame, and so on, when you were alive, now in the bardo state your eyes see forms, your ears hear sounds, and all your senses are clear and faultless. So it is said, complete with all the senses. This is a sign that you have died and are wandering in the bardo state, so recognize, remember the instruction. O child of noble family, without obstruction means that as you are a mental body and your mind is separated from its support, you have no material body. So now you can pass back and forth even through Mount Meru, the king of mountains, or anywhere except your mother's womb and the Vajra seat. This is a sign that you are wandering in the bardo of becoming, so remember your guru's teaching and supplicate the Lord of great compassion. O child of noble family, possessing the power of miracles resulting from karma means that you now have miraculous powers resulting from the force of karma in accordance with your actions, not those which come from meditation or virtues. You can circle the four continents and Mount Meru in an instant and arrive anywhere you want instantaneously as soon as you think of it, or in the time it takes a man to stretch out and draw back his hand. But these various powers are unsuitable. Do not think about them. Now you have the ability to display them without hindrance. You can perform everything you think of, and there is no action you cannot do. So recognize and supplicate your guru. O child of noble family, seen by the pure eyes of gods with the same nature, means that those who are going to be born with the same nature will see one another in the bardo state. So those who are going to be born as gods see each other. In the same way, whichever of the six realms they are going to be born in, those of the same nature will see each other. Do not yearn for them, but meditate on the Lord of great compassion. Seen by the pure eyes of gods also means seen by the pure divine eye of meditation in real samadhi, and not only that which comes from the merit of the gods. But they do not always see. If they concentrate on seeing, they will see. But if not, or if their meditation is disturbed, they do not see. O child of noble family, with a body like this, you will see your home and family as though you were meeting them in a dream. But although you speak to them, you will get no reply, and you will see your relatives and family weeping. So you will think, I am dead, what shall I do? And you will feel intense pain, like the pain of a fish rolling in hot sand. But now suffering is no use. If you have a guru, supplicate him, or supplicate the yidam, the lord of great compassion. Even though you are attached to your relatives, it is of no use, so do not be attached. Supplicate the Lord of great compassion, and there will be no suffering or fear. O child of noble family, blown by the moving winds of karma, your mind, without support, helplessly rides the horse of wind like a feather, swaying and swinging. You will say to the mourners, I am here, do not weep. 
but they will not perceive you, so you will think, I have died, and now you will feel great pain. Do not suffer like that. All the time there will be a gray haze like the gray light of an autumn dawn, neither day nor night. This kind of bardo state will last for one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven weeks, up to forty-nine days. It is said that the suffering in the bardo of becoming generally lasts for twenty-one days, but this is not quite certain because of the influence of karma. O child of noble family, at this time the great tornado of karma, terrifying, unbearable, whirling fiercely, will drive you from behind. Do not be afraid of it. It is your own confused projection. Dense darkness, terrifying and unbearable, will go before you with terrible cries of strike and kill. Do not be afraid of them. In the case of others who have done great evil, many flesh-eating demons will appear as a result of their karma, bearing various weapons, yelling war cries, shouting kill, strike, and so on. You will feel that you are being chased by various terrifying wild animals and pursued by a great army in snow, rain, storms, and darkness. There will be sounds of mountains crumbling, of lakes flooding, of fire spreading, and of fierce winds springing up. In fear you will escape wherever you can, but you will be cut off by three precipices in front of you, white, red, and black, deep and dreadful, and you will be on the point of falling down them. O child of noble family, they are not really precipices, they are aggression, passion, and ignorance. Recognize this now to be the bardo of becoming, and call the name of the Lord of great compassion. O Lord of great compassion, my guru, the three jewels, do not let me fall into hell. Supplicate fervently like this, do not forget. In the case of others who have gathered merit and were virtuous and practiced dharma sincerely, all kinds of perfect enjoyment will invite them, and they will experience all kinds of perfect bliss and happiness. In the case of those who are indifferent and ignorant, who did neither good nor evil, they will not experience pleasure or pain, but only ignorance and indifference will appear. Whatever arises like this, O child of noble family, whatever pleasures and objects of desire, do not be attracted to them or yearn for them. Offer them to the guru and the three jewels. Give up attachment and longing in your heart. And if the experience of indifference arises without either pleasure or pain, rest your mind in the great symbol state of an undistracted non-meditation. This is very important. O child of noble family, at this time bridges, shrines, and monasteries, huts, stupas, and so on will shelter you for a moment, but you will not stay there for long. Since your mind is separated from your body, you cannot settle down. You feel angry and cold, and consciousness becomes airy, speeding, swaying, and impermanent. Then you will think, Alas, I am dead. What shall I do now? And thinking this, your heart will suddenly grow empty and cold, and you will feel intense and boundless pain. Since you must move on without settling in any one place, do not occupy yourself with all kinds of thoughts, but rest your mind in its basic state. The time comes when you have no food except that which has been dedicated for you to eat, and there is no certainty of friends. These are signs of the mental body wandering in the bardo of becoming. At this moment, pleasure and pain are determined by your karma. You will see your homeland, friends, and relatives, and your own corpse, and you will think, Now I am dead, so what should I do? The mental body will be in extreme pain, so you will think, now why not find a body? And you will experience going everywhere to look for a body. Even if you enter your own corpse up to nine times, winter will have frozen it, or summer made it rot, or else your relatives will have burned it or buried it in a grave, or given it to the birds and wild animals. For a long time has passed in the bardo of Dharmata, so you will find nowhere to enter. You will be in great despair and have the feeling of being squeezed in between all the rocks and stones. Suffering like this is the bardo of becoming. Even if you look for a body, there is nothing but suffering. So cut off your yearning for a body and rest in the state of non-action, undistracted. By being shown in this way, liberation from the bardo is attained. But if, in spite of being shown like this, it is impossible to recognize because of the power of bad karma, one should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, listen. It is your own karma that you are suffering like this, so you cannot blame anyone else. It is your own karma, so now supplicate the three jewels fervently. They will protect you. If you do not supplicate like this and do not know the great symbol meditation, and you do not meditate on your yidam, then the good conscience within you will collect all your good actions and count out white pebbles 
and the bad conscience within you will collect all your evil actions and count out black pebbles. At this time you will be very frightened and terrified, and you will tremble and lie, saying, I have not sinned. Then the Lord of death will say, I will look in the mirror of karma. And when he looks in the mirror, all your sins and virtues will suddenly appear in it clearly and distinctly. So although you have lied, it is of no use. Then the Lord of Death will drag you by a rope tied round your neck and cut off your head, tear out your heart, pull out your entrails, lick your brains, drink your blood, eat your flesh and gnaw your bones. But you cannot die, so even though your body is cut into pieces, you will recover. Being cut again and again causes extreme pain, so do not be afraid when the white pebbles are being counted. Do not lie and do not fear the Lord of Death. Since you are a mental body, you cannot die even if you are killed and cut up. The lords of death are the natural form of emptiness, your own confused projections, and you are emptiness, a mental body of unconscious tendencies. Emptiness cannot harm emptiness. The uncharacterized cannot harm the uncharacterized. External lords of death, gods, evil spirits, the bullheaded demon, and so on, have no reality apart from your own confused projections, so recognize this. At this moment, recognize everything as the bardo. Meditate on the samadhi of the great symbol. If you do not know how to meditate, look closely at the nature of what makes you afraid and you will see emptiness which has no nature whatever. This is called the dharmakaya. But this emptiness is not negation. Its nature is frightening. Mind with great awareness and clarity. This is the mind of Sambhogakaya. The emptiness and the luminosity are not two separate things, but the nature of emptiness is luminosity and the nature of luminosity is emptiness. Now the indivisible emptiness luminosity, the naked mind, is stripped bare and dwells in its uncreated state. This is the svabhavikaya. Its own natural energy arises everywhere without obstruction. This is the compassionate nirmanakaya. O child of noble family, see in this way without distraction. As soon as you recognize, you will attain complete enlightenment in the four kayas. Do not be distracted. This is the dividing line where Buddhas and sentient beings are separated. It is said of this moment, in an instant they are separated, in an instant complete enlightenment. Until yesterday you were distracted, so although so much of the bardo state has appeared, you have not recognized, and you have so much fear. If you are distracted now, the rope of compassion will be cut off and you will go to a place where there is no liberation, so be careful. By being shown like this, even though he did not recognize before, he will recognize here and attain liberation. If he is a layman who does not know how to meditate like this, one should say these words. O child of noble family, if you do not know how to meditate like this, remember the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and the Lord of great compassion, and supplicate them. Meditate on all the terrifying projections as the Lord of great compassion, or as your Yidam. Remember your Guru and the secret transmission name you had in the human world, and tell it to the Dharma King, the Lord of Death. Even if you fall down the precipice, you will not be hurt, so give up fear and terror. By being shown in these words, even though he was not liberated before, he will be liberated here. But because of the possibility that he may not recognize, and so not be liberated, it is very important to make another effort. So one should call the dead person by name again and say these words. These present experiences will throw you into states of joy and sadness alternately at each moment, like a catapult. So now do not create any feeling of passion and aggression. If you are going to be born in a higher realm, at the time when experiences of the higher realms occur, your relatives in the place you have left are sacrificing many animals dedicated for the sake of the dead. So impure thoughts will arise in you and you will feel violent anger which will cause you to be born as a hell being. So, whatever is done in the place you have left, do not get angry, but meditate on kindness. If you are attached to the possessions you have left behind, or if you feel attached to them through knowing that someone else is owning and enjoying your things, you will get angry with the people you have left behind, and that will certainly cause you to be born as a hell being or a hungry ghost, even if you are going to reach a higher state. In any case, even if you are attached to the things you have left behind, you cannot get them. It is no use to you, so give up attachment and yearning for your possessions. Abandon them. Make a firm decision. Whoever is enjoying your things, do not be possessive, but let them go. With one-pointed concentration, think that you are offering them to your guru and the three jewels, and remain in a state of desirelessness.
When the Kankani ritual for the dead is recited for you, and the purification from the lower realms, and so on, are performed for your sake, with a subtle supernatural perception resulting from your karma, you will see them being done impurely, sleepily, inattentively, and so on, with careless behavior without observance of the Samaya vows, and you will be aware of lack of faith and feelings of disbelief, sinful actions through fear and impurities in the rituals, and so you will think, Alas, they are deceiving me, surely they are deceiving me. Thinking this, you will have great sorrow and despair, and on top of not feeling pure devotion, you will disbelieve and lose faith, and that will certainly cause you to go to the lower realms. It is no use but very harmful, so however impurely the rituals are performed by the spiritual friends you have left behind, think with pure faith and devotion, Well, my projections must be impure. How can there be impurity in Buddha's words? These are caused by my own impure projections, like seeing the faults of my own face reflected in a mirror. As for these people, their body is the Sangha, their speech is the Holy Dharma, and their mind is the nature of the Buddha. Therefore, I take refuge in them. Then whatever is done in the place you have left will help you, so it is very important to have pure thoughts in this way. Do not forget. If you are going to be born in one of the three lower realms, at the time when experiences of them occur, your relatives in the place you have left are performing virtuous rituals free from sin, and gurus and teachers are practicing holy dharma with absolute purity of body, speech, and mind. So you will feel great joy on seeing them, and that will immediately cause you to be born in a higher realm, even if you are going to fall down into the three lower realms. So it is very helpful. Therefore, it is very important not to have impure thoughts, but to feel pure devotion without prejudice. So be careful. O child of noble family, to sum up, now your mind in the bardo state has no support, so it is light and mobile. And whatever thought arises in it, good or bad, it is very powerful. So do not think of any evil actions, but remember the practice of virtue. If you have no practice, feel devotion and pure thoughts. Supplicate your Yidam and the Lord of Great Compassion, and say this inspiration prayer with intense concentration. When parted from beloved friends, wandering alone, my own projections' empty forms appear. May the Buddhas send out the power of their compassion, so that the Bardo's terrors do not come. When I suffer through the power of evil karma, may my Yidam clear away all suffering. When the sound of the Dharmata roars like a thousand thunders, may it all become the sound of the six syllables. When I follow my karma without a refuge, may the Lord of great compassion be my refuge. When I suffer the karma of unconscious tendencies, may the Samadhi of bliss and luminosity arise. Say this prayer fervently. It will certainly lead you on the path. Be absolutely convinced that this is not false. This is very important. When this is said, he will remember and recognize and so attain liberation. But even though one does this many times, recognition is difficult because of the influence of much evil karma, so it is very helpful to repeat it again many times. Calling the dead person again by name, one should say these words. O child of noble family, if you have not understood what has gone before, from now on the body you had in your past life will grow fainter, and your future body will become clearer. So you will feel sad and think, I am suffering like this, so now I shall look for whatever kind of body appears. And you will move about, backwards and forwards, towards anything that appears. The six lights of the six realms of existence will shine, and the one in which you are going to be born because of your karma will shine most brightly. O oh, child of noble family, listen. If you ask what the six lights are, the soft white light of the gods will shine, and similarly, the red light of the jealous gods, the blue light of human beings, the green light of the animals, the yellow light of the hungry ghosts, and the smoke-colored light of the hell beings. These are the six lights. At that moment, your body will also take on the color of the place where you're going to be born. O oh, child of noble family, at this time the essential point of the instruction is very important. Whatever light shines, meditate on that as the Lord of great compassion. Meditate on the thought that when the light appears, it is the Lord of great compassion. This is the most profound essential point. It is extremely important and prevents birth. Meditate for a long time on whichever deity is your Yidam, as a vision without any real nature of its own, like an illusion. This is called the pure illusory body. Then let the Yidam disappear from the edges inwards and rest for a while in the inconceivable state of emptiness luminosity, which consists in nothing whatever. Meditate again on the Yidam, 
then again on the luminosity. Meditate like this alternately, and after that let your mind too disappear from the edges inwards. Wherever there is space, there is mind, and wherever there is mind, there is the Dharmakaya. Rest in the state of simplicity and selflessness of the Dharmakaya. In this state, birth is prevented, and he will become a Buddha. But those whose practice was poor and who were not adept in meditation will not understand, and still confused will wander to the entrance of a womb. So the instructions for closing the womb entrance are very important. One should call the dead person by name and say these words, O child of noble family, if you have not recognized what has gone before, now you will feel that you are moving upwards or across or downwards by the force of karma. So at this moment, meditate on the Lord of great compassion. Remember. Then you will have the experience, like that which was described before, of whirlwinds, snowstorms, and hailstorms, darkness closing around, and many men chasing you, and you will escape from them. Those without merit will feel that they are escaping to a place of suffering, but those with merit will feel that they are arriving in a place of joy. At this time, O child of noble family, all the signs of the country and place where you are going to be born will appear. So now listen without distraction, for there are many very profound essential points of instruction. Although you have not understood these secrets of recognition before, even one whose practice was very poor will get the point here, so listen. At this time, it is very important to take great care with the method of closing the entrance of the womb. There are two methods, stopping the person who is entering and closing the womb entrance which is being entered. This is the instruction for stopping the person who is entering. O child of noble family, clearly visualize whichever deity is your yidam as a vision with no real nature of its own, like an illusion or the moon in water. If you have no specific yidam, it is the Lord of great compassion himself. Visualize him vividly. Then let the yidam disappear from the edges inwards and meditate on the luminosity emptiness without any object of thought. This is the profound secret. It is said that by means of it the womb is not entered. So meditate in this way. But if this does not stop you and you are just about to enter a womb, there are profound instructions for closing the womb entrance, which is about to be entered. So listen. Repeat after me these words from the main verses of the bardo. Now, when the bardo of becoming dawns upon me, I will concentrate my mind one-pointedly and strive to prolong the results of good karma, close the womb entrance, and think of resistance. This is the time when perseverance and pure thought are needed. Abandon jealousy and meditate on the guru with his consort. Say these words clearly aloud and arouse your memory. It is very important to meditate on their meaning and to put it into practice. This is the meaning. Now, when the bardo of becoming dawns upon me, means that now you are wandering in the bardo of becoming. As signs of this, if you look into the water, you will not see your reflection, and your body has no shadow. Now there is no material body of flesh and blood, but these are signs of the mental body wandering in the bardo of becoming. So now you must concentrate your mind one-pointedly without distraction. Just now, that one-pointed concentration is the most important thing. It is like controlling a horse with a bridle. Whatever you concentrate on will come about. So do not think of evil actions, but remember the Dharma, the teachings, the transmissions, and the authorizations for texts such as this liberation through hearing, which you received in the human world, and strive to prolong the results of good karma. It is very important. Do not forget. Do not be distracted. Now is the time which is the dividing line between going up and going down. Now is the time when by slipping into laziness, even for a moment, you will suffer forever. Now is the time when by concentrating one-pointedly, you will be happy forever. Concentrate your mind one-pointedly. Strive to prolong the results of good karma. Now the time has come to close the womb entrance. It is said, close the womb entrance and think of resistance. This is the time when perseverance and pure thought are needed. Now that time has come. First, the womb entrance should be closed. And there are five methods of closing it, so understand them well. O child of noble family, at this time projections of men and women making love will appear. When you see them, do not enter in between them, but remember and meditate on the man and woman as the guru and his consort. Mentally prostrate yourself and make offerings with deep devotion, and ask for teachings, 
As soon as you concentrate intensely on this thought, the womb entrance will certainly be closed. But if this does not close it, and you are just about to enter a womb, meditate on the Guru and his consort as your own Yidam, or the Lord of Great Compassion, with his consort, and mentally make an offering to them. With intense devotion, ask them to bestow spiritual attainments. This will close the womb entrance. But if this does not close it, and you are just about to enter a womb, here is the third instruction on turning away passion and aggression. There are four kinds of birth. Birth from an egg, birth from a womb, spontaneous birth, and birth from moisture. Of these, birth from an egg and birth from a womb are similar. As above, there will be projections of males and females in sexual union. And if you enter a womb at this moment through the power of passion and aggression, you will be born as a horse, bird, dog, human being, and so on whatever it may be. If you are going to be born as a male, you will experience yourself as male and feel violent aggression towards the father and jealousy and desire for the mother. If you are going to be born as a female, you will experience yourself as female and feel intense envy and jealousy of the mother and intense desire and passion for the father. This will cause you to enter the path leading to the womb and you will experience self-existing bliss in the midst of the meeting of the sperm and ovum from that blissful state you will lose consciousness, and the embryo will grow round and oblong and so on until the body matures and comes out from the mother's womb. You will open your eyes, and you have turned into a puppy. From first being a man, you have now become a dog, so you will suffer in a dog kennel, or similarly in a pigsty, or an anthill, or a wormhole, or else you may be born as a young bull, or a goat, or lamb, and so on. There is no returning here. You will endure all kinds of suffering from a state of great stupidity and ignorance. Circling like this around the six realms of existence of hell beings, hungry ghosts, and so on, you will be tormented by boundless suffering. There is nothing more powerful or terrifying than this. Alas, alas, those who do not have a guru's sacred teachings will fall down the great precipice of samsara in this manner and endure endless, unbearable suffering. So therefore, listen to my words and understand this instruction of mine. Now the instruction for closing the womb entrance by turning away passion and aggression is given. Listen and understand. It is said, close the womb entrance and think of resistance. This is the time when perseverance and pure thought are needed. Abandon jealousy and meditate on the guru with his consort. As above, you will have feelings of jealousy. If you are going to be born as a male, you will love the mother and hate the father. And if you are going to be born as a female, you will love the father and hate the mother. So at this time there is a profound instruction. O child of noble family, when passion and aggression arise like this, meditate in this way. Alas, I am a being with such evil karma that I have been wandering like this in samsara until now, through clinging to passion and aggression. If I go on feeling passion and aggression like this, I shall wander in samsara endlessly and sink into the depths of the ocean of suffering for a long time. So now I will feel no passion or aggression at all. Alas, now I will never again feel passion and aggression. By concentrating your mind intensely and one-pointedly on this thought, that itself will close the womb entrance, so the tantras say. O child of noble family, do not be distracted. Concentrate your mind one-pointedly. But if, even after doing this, the womb entrance is not closed and you are about to enter a womb, then it should be closed by the instruction of the unreal and illusory nature of everything. Meditate in this way. Alas, the father and mother, the great storm, the whirlwind, the thunder, the terrifying projections and all these apparent phenomena are illusory in their real nature. However they appear, they are not real. All substances are false and untrue. They are like a mirage. They are not permanent. They are not changeless. What is the use of desire? What is the use of fear? It is regarding the non-existent as existent. All these are projections of my mind, and since the mind itself is illusory and non-existent from the beginning, from where externally do they arise like this? I did not understand in this way before, and so I believed the non-existent to exist, the untrue to be true, the illusion to be real. Therefore, I have wandered in samsara for so long. And if I do not realize that they are illusions, I shall still wander in samsara for a long time and certainly fall into the muddy swamp of suffering. 
Now they're all like dreams, like illusions, like echoes, like cities of the Gandharvas, like mirages, like images, like optical illusions, like the moon in water. They are not real, even for a moment. Certainly they are not true, but false. By concentrating one-pointedly on this conviction, belief in their reality is destroyed, and when one is inwardly convinced in such a way, belief in a self is counteracted. If you understand unreality like this from the bottom of your heart, the womb entrance will certainly be closed. But if, even after doing this, the belief in reality is not destroyed, and the womb entrance is not closed, and you are about to enter a womb, there is a profound instruction. O child of noble family, if even after doing this, the womb entrance is not closed, now it should be closed by the fifth method, meditation on the luminosity, which should be done in this way. All substances are my own mind and this mind is emptiness, unarisen and unobstructed. Thinking this, keep your mind natural and undiluted, self-contained in its own nature like water poured into water, just as it is, loose, open and relaxed. By letting it rest naturally and loosely, you can be sure that the womb entrance to all four kinds of birth will certainly be closed. Many true and profound instructions for closing the womb entrance have been given above. It is impossible for anyone of high, average, or low capacities, whichever he may be, not to be liberated by them. Why is this? Firstly, because consciousness in the Bardo state possesses supernatural perception of worldly things, so he can hear what I say. Secondly, even if he was deaf and blind, now he has all the senses complete, so he can hear what is said. Thirdly, being continually overcome by fear, he is thinking undistractedly what to do, so he listens to what I say. And fourthly, as the consciousness has no support, it comes directly to wherever the concentration is directed, so it is easy to guide. The mind is nine times more clear, so even if he is stupid, by force of karma the mind becomes so clear at this time that it can meditate on whatever is taught. Essential points such as these are the reason. For the same reason, it is also helpful to perform the rituals for the dead. Therefore, it is very important to persevere in reading this great liberation through hearing for up to nine days. Even if he is not liberated at one showing, he will attain liberation at another. That is the reason why not one, but many showings are necessary. Even then, there are many kinds of people who are not used to doing good actions, but were extremely skilled in doing evil actions right from the start, and through the influence of many powerful veils of error, are not liberated. In spite of being shown and given these objects of meditation so many times above, so now, if the womb entrance has not been closed before, a profound instruction for choosing the womb entrance will be taught below. One should call on the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas for help and repeat the refuge, then call the dead person by name three times and say these words, O child of noble family who is dead, listen. Although you have been shown with the instructions above so many times, you have not understood. So now, if the womb entrance has not been closed, the time has come to take a body. There are not one, but many true and profound instructions for you to choose a womb entrance. So understand and do not be distracted. Listen well with intense concentration and understand. O child of noble family, now the signs and characteristics of the continent where you are going to be born will appear, so recognize them. Examine where you are going to be born and choose the continent. If you are going to be born in the eastern continent, noble body, you will see a lake adorned with geese and ganders. Think of resistance and do not go there. Although it is full of happiness, it is a place where dharma does not flourish, so do not enter it. If you are going to be born in the southern continent, Rose Apple Island, you will see luxurious, beautiful dwellings. You should enter it if you can. If you are going to be born in the western continent, enjoyment of wish-fulfilling cows, you will see a lake adorned with horses and mares. Do not go there, but come back here. Although it has great pleasures, it is a place where Dharma does not flourish, so do not enter it. If you are going to be born in the northern continent, unpleasant sound, you will see a lake adorned with cattle or with trees. Recognize them as signs of taking birth and do not enter there. Although it has long life and merits, Dharma does not flourish there, so do not enter. If you are going to be born as a god, you will see beautiful, many-storied temples made of various jewels. If you are fit to enter there, you should enter. If you are going to be born as a jealous god, you will see beautiful groves, 
or what seem to be revolving wheels of fire, do not enter there at all, but think of resistance. If you are going to be born as an animal, you will see, as through a mist, rock caves and holes in the ground and straw huts. Do not enter there. If you are going to be born as a hungry ghost, you will see tree stumps and black shapes sticking up, shallow caves and black patches. If you go there, you will be born as a hungry ghost and experience all kinds of suffering through hunger and thirst. So do not go there at all, but think of resistance and persevere strongly. If you are going to be born as a hell being, you will hear songs sung by those of evil karma, or you will have to enter helplessly, or you will feel that you have gone into a dark land with black and red houses, black pits and black roads. If you go there, you will enter hell and experience unbearable suffering through heat and cold from which you will never get out. So do not go into its midst. Do not enter at all, but be careful. It is said, close the womb entrance and think of resistance. This is needed now. O child of noble family, even though you wish not to go, you have no power of your own. You are helplessly compelled to go. From behind, the avengers of karma pursue you, and in front, avengers and murderers drag you along. Darkness, hurricanes, violent storms, noises, snow and rain, fierce hailstorms and snowstorms will whirl you around, and you will escape from them. Then in escaping you will look for a refuge, and you will find safety in the luxurious houses described before, or in rock shelters or holes in the ground, between trees, or in the round cavities of lotus flowers and so on. Hidden there, you will be afraid to come out, and you will think, I cannot go out of here now and through fear of leaving you will become very attached to that place. You are afraid of meeting those terrors of the bardo if you go outside. You feel extreme fear of them. And so you hide inside and take a body, however bad it may be, and will experience all kinds of suffering. That is a sign that demons and evil forces are obstructing you now, and at this time there is a profound instruction, so listen and understand. At this time of terror, when you are helplessly pursued by the Avengers, you should immediately visualize with your whole mind the blessed supreme Haruka, or Hayagriva, or Vajrapani, or your Yadam, if you have one, with a huge body and thick limbs, standing in a terrifying attitude of wrath which crushes all evil forces into dust. Separated from the Avengers by his blessing and compassion, you will have the power to choose the entrance of a womb. This is the true profound secret of the instruction, so understand it. O child of noble family, the gods of meditation and so on are born through the power of samadhi. A large class of evil spirits, such as hungry ghosts and so on, have changed their attitude while in the bardo state. Then they are able to appear in various illusory forms of hungry ghosts and demons, and are transformed into that mental body itself. The hungry ghosts who dwell in the depths of the sea and the hungry ghosts who fly through space, and all the 80,000 classes of negative forces and so on, have taken on that mental body by changing their attitude. At this time, the best thing is to contemplate the great symbol of emptiness. But if you cannot do that, then take part in the play of illusion. If you cannot do that either, at least do not be attached to anything, but meditate on the Yidam, the Lord of great compassion, and you will become a Sambhogakaya Buddha in the Bardo state. O child of noble family, if you have to enter a womb in this way through force of karma, the instruction for choosing the entrance to a womb will now be taught. Listen. Do not go into whatever womb entrance appears. If the avengers come and you cannot avoid entering, meditate on Hayagriva. Since you now possess subtle supernatural perception, you will know all the places in turn, so make a choice. There are two instructions, for transference to a pure Buddha realm and for choosing an impure samsaric womb entrance. So act in this way. Transference to the pure realm of space, of purified faculties, is directed like this. Ah, how sad it is that I still remain in this muddy swamp of samsara even now, after such a long time of countless ages without beginning or end, and while so many others have already become Buddhas, I have not been liberated. From this moment on, I feel sickened at this samsara. I dread it. I am worn out with it. Now it is time to get ready to escape, so I must bring about a spontaneous birth in a lotus flower at the feet of the Buddha Amitabha in the western blissful realm. With this thought, concentrate intensely on the blissful realm in the west. It is vital to make this effort. 
or else if you direct intense concentration, one-pointedly and without distraction, toward whichever realm you wish, the pure realm, or complete joy, or the densely filled, or the realm of willow leaves, or the palm tree mountain, or the palace of lotus light in Urgian, you will immediately be born in that realm. Or if you wish to go into the presence of Lord Maitreya, in the joyful realm, concentrate on this thought. At this moment in the Bardo state, the time has come for me to go into the presence of the Dharma king Maitreya in the joyful realm, so I will go, and you will be born spontaneously in the heart of a lotus in the presence of Maitreya. Otherwise, if you cannot do this and wish to enter a womb, or find you have to enter one, there is an instruction for choosing an impure samsaric womb entrance, so listen. As before, look at the continent you are going to choose with supernatural perception and enter a place where dharma flourishes. If you are going to be spontaneously born in a filthy dung heap, you will perceive that fetid mass as sweet-smelling, and you will feel attracted to it and be born there. So whatever appears, do not trust it, but put an end to the signs of desire and hatred and choose a womb entrance. Again, it is very important to concentrate like this. I will be born as a universal emperor for the good of all sentient beings, or as a brahmana, like a great sala tree, or as the son of a siddha, or in a family of a pure lineage of dharma, or in a family where the father and mother have faith, and taking a body with merits which can benefit all sentient beings, I will do good. Concentrating on this thought, the womb should be entered. At this time you should bless the womb you are entering as a palace of the gods, and supplicate the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, and the Yidams, especially the Lord of Great Compassion, and enter the womb with a longing of a request for transmission. It is possible to make a mistake in choosing the entrance of a womb like this, by seeing a good womb entrance as bad or a bad one as good under the influence of karma. So now again the essential point of the instruction is very important. So do this. Even if a womb entrance appears good, do not trust it. And even if it appears bad, do not feel dislike for it. The true, profound, essential secret is to enter into the supreme state of equilibrium in which there is no good or bad, acceptance or rejection, passion or aggression. But, except for the few who are experienced in this, it is hard to get rid of the disease of bad unconscious tendencies. So to prevent him taking refuge among sinners of the poorest capacities, the lowest of the low, like beasts, if he cannot cut off passion and aggression in this way, one should call the dead person again by name and say these words. O oh, child of noble family, if you do not know how to choose a womb entrance and cannot get rid of passion and aggression, whatever of the above experiences may arise, call on the name of the three jewels and take refuge in them. Supplicate the Lord of great compassion. Go on with your head held high. Give up attachment and yearning for the relatives and friends, sons and daughters you have left behind. They cannot help you. Enter now into the blue light of human beings or the white light of the gods. Enter the jeweled palaces and the pleasure gardens. This should be repeated up to seven times. Then one should supplicate the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and read the Bardo prayer which protects from fear, the main verses of the Bardo, and deliverance from the dangerous pathway of the bardo up to seven times. Then one should read the liberation through wearing which spontaneously liberates the skandhas and the daily practice which spontaneously liberates the unconscious tendencies clearly and distinctly. Thus, by acting rightly, yogins of the highest insight affect the ejection of consciousness in the bardo of the moment before death and do not have to wander in the bardo state but bypass it and attain liberation. Below them, a few experienced people recognize the luminosity of the dharmata after the bardo of the moment before death and bypass and become Buddhas. Those below them are liberated in accordance with their karmic results at one time or another when the peaceful and wrathful projections appear in the bardo of dharmata during the following weeks. As there are many stages, they will recognize whichever is appropriate and attain liberation. But those whose good karmic results are weak and who have many veils of error and very bad karma, must wander on down to the bardo of becoming. But as there are many showings, like the steps of a ladder, they will recognize at one or another and be liberated. But if those whose good karmic results are very weak do not recognize during the above and are overpowered by fear, 
There is a series of instructions in turn for closing the womb entrance and for choosing a womb entrance. So they will recognize it one or another. And trusting the object of meditation, attain the highest state of boundless virtue. Even the lowest of the low, like beasts, are turned back from the lower realms by the virtue of taking refuge. They will attain a precious human body complete with all the freedoms and good opportunities, and in their next life meet a holy guru, a spiritual friend, so they will get instruction and be liberated. If this teaching is received during the bardo of becoming, the instruction prolongs one's good karmic results, like putting a pipe into a broken water channel. It is impossible even for all great sinners not to be liberated when they hear this teaching. Why is this? Because during the bardo, both the compassionate invitation of all the peaceful and wrathful Buddhas and deities and the invitation of the tempters and negative forces come together. So just by hearing the teaching at this time, their attitude is influenced and they attain liberation. Influence is easy because the mental body has no basis of flesh and blood. However far they have wandered in the bardo state, they see and hear with subtle karmic supernatural perception, and they come. This is extremely helpful, for then they understand, and their mind is instantaneously influenced. It is like the device of a catapult, or like a huge tree trunk which cannot be moved by a hundred men, but when it is put in water can be taken wherever one wants in a moment. It is like controlling a horse with a bridle. Therefore one should approach all who have died, and if the corpse is present, a friend should read this reminder again and again until blood and pus come out of the nostrils. Meanwhile, the corpse should remain undisturbed. The observances for this are, animals should not be sacrificed for dedication to the dead person. In the presence of the corpse, friends and relations should not weep and mourn and make noise, which may be done elsewhere, and as many acts of virtue as possible should be done. As well as this teaching of the great liberation through hearing, it is very good if any of the other teachings joined to the end of this instruction are also read. One should read this continually, and learn the word meanings and terms by heart. Then when death is certain and the signs of death have been recognized, if one's condition allows, one should read it aloud oneself and contemplate it. And if one is not able to do that, it should be given to a Dharma brother or sister to read. For this reminder will certainly liberate. There is no doubt. This teaching does not need any practice. It is a profound instruction which liberates just by being seen and heard and read. This profound instruction leads great sinners on the secret path. If one does not forget its words and terms, even when being chased by seven dogs, the instruction liberates in the bardo of the moment before death. Even if the Buddhas of the past, present, and future were to search, they would not find a better teaching than this. The bardo instruction which liberates human beings, the profound innermost essence, the great liberation through hearing. This treasure was discovered by the Siddha Karma Lingpa in the mountain of Gampodar. May it benefit the Dharma and all sentient beings.